So in this video, we're gonna look at Blender Octane's scatter system and find out, is it worth using? Let's get straight into it. All right, so we're all familiar on how to scatter objects in Blender. I'm quite sure you know you can use the scatter node that comes default with Blender, or you can use geometry nodes, which I prefer. So first thing first, drag in a plane, make sure you apply the scale on that. After we've got our plane inset, we're gonna go ahead and jump into the shader tab. Now, when we come into the shading tab, you're gonna click on new objects. I'm gonna make this full screen. You can click on new objects, delete the material, press shift A, scroll down to octane geometry, and here it is scatter on surface or scatter on value. I'm gonna show you the scatter on surface. Here is our scatter node. Now what I do here is click on this material output and turn it to octane. Now you can see we have octane geometry. We're gonna drag that out into there. And then what we're gonna need to, we need to, what do we want to scatter on our scatter surface? Click on this and brings in a node. And then here, we're gonna select the object we want. We wanna scatter on the plane. Okay, so once we have that, next here is our object, scatter object one, two, three, and four. I'm gonna to go to scatter object one, pop in another plane. And then what we need to do is what are we going to scatter onto this plane? So I'm gonna jump back into the tab here. And I'm just gonna go ahead and bring in a Suzanne head. I'm gonna scale it down, make sure you apply the scale. So what we're gonna do, click the back on here. Now what we're going to do, scroll in here and select the Suzanne, the Suzanne head. Okay, now we see nothing happening. And this is one reason why I don't like working with Octane Scattering System, because you have to have the render enabled to work. So then you fire it up the render and we still don't see anything, nothing is working. Well, we need to basically assign this to its geo. So with the plane selected, click on over here on the data object, scroll down until you come to Octane Geometry Nodes. Here we want to select our scatter node, right? Or actually this is the material and I'm just going to rename this scat. Then if you come over here to our nodes, click up oh, there, scat. Go ahead and select that. And then what are we going, what's the object? The Octane object, it's going to be this scatter on surface. We come down here, there it is, scatter on surface. So basically we have the scatter on surface with the actual scatter node plugged into there. So now if we come back in here and fire up the render, there it is, we have the object being scattered on there. But you can see it's basically being scattered onto the four vertices. How do we change that? This is where we get into the surf scattering on surface. If we come down here, we have a bunch of different distribution types. Distribution on surface, one instance on per point, per vertices, and that's exactly what it's doing. We come in here and we can click random instances by relative density. Okay, and then it shrinks it down. Now we only have one, well, what's going on? Well, if we scroll down here, keep coming, density. Now be very careful with this, it is extremely sensitive. For example, let me turn off my render so it doesn't crash. If I click and drag, boom, 17,000 whatever. It's extremely sensitive. So hold shift. Matter of fact, don't even hold shift, it's still going crazy. Like I would just type in your value. So I'm gonna type in 100 and let's fire up the render. Boom, we have 100 Suzanne heads being scattered onto this surface. Now you can clearly see one thing, Suzanne has facing up oriented here, but here it's like facing down. So we got to go down here and we scroll down and keep coming down here to instant orientation, orientation priority up. I'm just gonna go to front. Okay, now it's sitting basically how we have it here on the, on the side there. And then from here, you can start to get into the details of this node here. You can clearly see we have uh, lots of different settings here, which I have messed with some, especially like these ones here. We come down to rotation mode. Right now it's set to fix. So if I go to rotation max and I just turn it, you notice everything is being turned and again it's like all of the rotation is being set so if i come back in here and we'll just select one and it's like okay well that's the x that's the x rotation what about the z here's the z rotation but everything is moving so again if we come here to where it says fix we can change this to random with independent axes so now we go ahead and rotate that rotate that everybody's kind of rotating on their own axis right and then vice versa with this other stuff if you scroll down here here's the minimum amount right so if i can go to minimum 30 and then we'll go and crank this up to 360 so we have a bunch of them randomly spread out now if we come down here also we do have the same setup for scale again here's scale i'm going to set it to random and then you can basically bring that down so we got there it is our max and our min 
and then I think it's still stretching it. It's just like, to me, it's not that intuitive to work with compared to geo nodes now. So like for me, I just didn't really want to spend the time trying to figure this out because one, I have to keep the, the renderer working in order to see any changes I make, which I don't like because it slows my viewport down. You got a beefy machine, maybe you can handle that. But to me, it's still a little bit counterintuitive because again, I can set up all my settings on a geo node setup without having to worry about this. And then again, if we move this, you can move it now. Will I use it? Probably not because again, like I said, there's so many free add-ons. There's so many plugins, geo nodes to do the same thing more efficiently. So now one other thing I will show you, if you wanted to add in uh, maybe a something else, right? So let's take, let me go ahead and again, kill the render so I can continue working. I'm going to bring in a cube, scale the cube down, apply the scale. I'm going to go G X, move it off to the side, come back over to our plane. And now we can add in another one. For example, here we want a second object to scatter, duplicate this, take the geometry out onto the scatter object number two, come in here, choose the cube. And now we have the cube in here. We fire up the render and now we have the cube also in play. But to me again, like now, like how do I randomize just the cube without randomizing everything else? You would basically have to make another scatter system, hold another plane and make a second scatter system to do that. Here you also have this selection mode here, central random. So it's randomly dispersing between the three that I made, between the two that I made, you can see there's a cube over there. So if you guys are really into Blender Octane, go down to my Gumroad to have a whole bunch of free stuff down there that you guys can download. There is one node that's not in Blender Octane that I wish was, and check this video out to find out what it is. Patrick LeVar, keep rendering. I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace.